And now I'm going to make Ken name a favorite film or two. I'd like to name at least one good film and why he likes it, and one bad film and why he likes it, and they can't be from the Jaws series. Um, this is a hard question for me because it's like a I favorite, like, not your favorite. Right. A, I always hate it, by the way. I'll, yeah, the, what's people your favorite say, movie? What's your favorite game? You yeah. know, and I don't have a favorite game Correct. because I do a lot of games. And if I've yeah. been playing a lot of one game, then I want to play another game. I always have to wiggle around this question with a bunch of if, ands, and, and recriminations. And the bottom line is I have a lot of favorite games. And I don't really know which one's better. I can't tell. I love Contract Bridge. Is it better than Cold Set Saga? I don't know. They, they kind of scratch different parts of my brain. So, okay. So a favorite movie that's good and a favorite movie that's bad. Um, well, this morning we were talking about the movie M. Which Ooh, is a, M. a Fritz Lang movie about a serial killer who's yes. played by Peter Lorre. And it was made in the 30s. And they barely knew how to do sound. Yeah, and it's so a lot of the a lot of the stuff is narrated or guys with their heads turned or stuff, so, yeah. or the phone a phone obscured the mouth, so you can't tell that it's not perfectly synced. But man, it's perfectly synced. Yeah, as far as the the editing and the choreography goes, there is nothing bad in an M, or there's nothing that's not really spectacular. The greatest the movie ever about a child murderer. It is. Uh, Peter Lorre is terrific. It's before he came to. It's before he fled Hitler. And he was yeah. in Germany at the time. Hitler was not in office yet. Right. So and he was. Fritz Lang had to flee him too. He did. Even yeah. though Fritz Lang's wife. And Fritz Lang got in trouble with Nazi, the Nazi Party. The Nazi Party didn't rule the government yet, but they were still influenced because because they thought that M and the subtag was like, like the, the murderer among us. The murderer among us, and they thought it referred to them, which. As it happened, it didn't. But I mean, well, it's a fair comp. Yeah, I think the fact that they were paranoid that, like, if anybody was talking about murderers, they must be talking about them is sort of a giveaway. That kind of sums up the Nazis, yeah. right? That they're offend that they assume that you're talking about them as murderers, and yet yeah. they think they're offended that you're talking about them as murderers. Like, I've been in many rooms and talked to many people about M, and if I no one ever thought title, about Nazis, nobody ever thought I was talking about them. What do you mean a murder among us? Do you mean me? For some reason, the Nazis assumed it was about them, though. Yeah, well, like I said, it's a fair cop. So M, yeah. M is really good. M is M, and M's not super long. So if you have a chance to see M, which you yeah. do, because it's probably uh, it's on, like on YouTube, it's public domain. You can get a super cheap DVD. You can get it probably on Amazon and yeah, Netflix. A, oh, but I would I would go ahead and you know you can always use your local library. Uh, oh, yeah. Get a copy of the... Uh, Ken works at a library. You can, you or, can get yes. a copy of the library, super, super cheap or free even. Yeah, but Criterion just, has got a really good edition. Of and it. then you will see M the way it should be, and you'll have seen one of the best crime movies ever. Yes, it is a top 20 movie. Out of Hitchcock's all time. Hitchcock. So good. And I love Hitchcock, but first lying, yeah. man, is he, at, is he doing a good job. Okay, that's a good choice for the good one. How about a bad one? Mm, again, like there's so many. Okay, talk to us about Brainiac. Okay, Brainiac. Brainiac. I had a guy once tell me that Brainiac saved his life. Okay, well, tell me that story. That's pretty good. He was super depressed, and things were bad all over, and he watched the Brainiac, and suddenly the world was, was rosy. And you, now you're going to tell us why it would be rosy after seeing the Brainiac. Because uh, the Brainiac is a Mexican movie. The plot is so amazing, and the filming is just like, it's... I can't say it's a bad movie in one sense, because the director did everything he wanted to do. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Like, people ask me, like, what's a bad movie? I think one of the two criteria is it has to fail at what it's trying to do. Okay, but you you can't very well sit there, though, and say that M is a great movie. It's But it's super entertaining. Yes. I mean, not yeah. M. Uh, Brainiac. 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 Brainiac so is talk, super entertaining. Talk to them about Brainiac, because Brainiac, like, when I first saw it as a kid, yeah, that was... That was it for me. Uh, Brainiac is a is a wonderful Mexican uh, black and white horror movie from the '60s. Uh, even though you would think it was made in the '40s or '50s. In general, Mexican movies look like American movies that are about ten or twenty years earlier. Yeah, they're like behind the times. Yeah, their their film studios were behind our film studios. So, um, M is about. You really have to kind of see M. It's hard to describe. Not M. Brainiac. You have to experience Brainiac. I'm sorry, you're correct. The monster is incredible. Yes. The scenes are incredible. It opens the, with the, the scene where he has his, his uh, silver bowl full of brains <laughs> that yes. he has to get a snack of during the party is incredible. And it's he's in the same room. The, the monster brains. is such an iconic monster. I yes. can't, I'm very sad there's not a full hell, head latex mask of this guy. Yes. Because I would wear it every Halloween. If Don Post had made a David Crosby mask, 
uh, that inflated with a pump, that would be the Brainiac. Yes. And then he has a tongue. He has a long uh, rubber tongue. tongue. And his hands are like he has two pincers. fingers that don't work very well. Yeah. Well, they're they're rubber pincers that you stick your fingers into. But the problem is he's supposed to attack people with them. And, and, they're, then they, they're, and they're too long for the hands to yeah. kind of blur and bend on. Yeah, so they, they all bend. So you get to see purpose. them all bendy, which is also great. And apparently he sucks your brain out or something. It's not exactly clear. But then they're in a bowl, so we can't quite figure but out But he kills people. Uh, yes. And he's magic. He's a magician. He can magically take the clothes right off your body and put them on his. And we know from the scene where he does this yeah. that the Brainiac goes commando because he leaves the guy's <laughs> boxers correct. on. correct. He doesn't take his underwear. He takes his suit. He, right, he, well, so he, he was he was born like, like 400 years ago so. during the Spanish uh, Inquisition yeah, uh, underwear wasn't that during the Mexican like Inquisition yes where he was sentenced to death but I'm just saying the fact it's, that the Brainiac goes commando is always praise on my mind I, I like the movie because it's one of the few movies that suggests that the Spanish Inquisition was a force for good like yes. usually we have a very jaundiced view well of be the, fair this is the Mexican Inquisition yeah, okay. Not the evil Spanish Inquisition, because yeah. the Mexican one obviously could have been a force for good. I, I fear, Especially if it has Brainiacs in it. Yeah, I fear most people fall and pray to the propaganda uh, put out there by Monty Python that uh, the Spanish Inquisition was a bad thing. Uh, because it killed tons of innocent people? Yes. But, but, but it's it, okay if you kill a hundred innocent people as long as you get one Brainiac. Yes. Uh, so he... Because uh, those... the Brainiac will come by and kill one of your descendants 300 years from now. So he, he's pulled before the uh, Spanish, the Holy Inquisition... And then he mocks them because he's like super cool. And then he does that thing where he's like, okay, you're going to burn me to death, but I'm going to go up in this meteor. There's a meteor, so it's Lovecraftian. See, there's outer yes. space connection. And I'm going to come back in 300 years. And it's like one of those things where he's like, I'm going to kill all your descendants. And But apparently each of them only have one descendant, so that was interesting. Yeah. Who all look exactly like them, coincidentally enough. Yeah. Which those, is pretty those, Spanish, those Mexican genes are really strong. Yeah, really strong. Uh, I, if Sandy and I have had similar conversations on other movies, I guess I'm very cold-hearted when it comes to family. Because like in uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, I was annoyed that the girl didn't kill her mom who was about to unleash Ghidra and murder millions of people. And you were like, well, you can't kill your mom. And I'm like, I would if she was going to kill millions of people. Well, uh, I guess I wouldn't want to kill my mom. I'd be sa pretty sad she's killed millions. I might be able to bring nerve myself to do it. I'm just, yeah. it, I'd be torn is all. Did also, they, my mom is probably never going to murder millions. In fact, my well, mom yes. has literally saved lives of people that were would have been dead otherwise. Like a guy being electrocuted by a Ooh. power line. She pulled him off the line with cloth when, when Got on, stopped her car, jumped off, saved his life, then got back her and went and did her errands. And the guy right. had to look her up afterwards. And she found yeah. that he found in the newspaper that he didn't know who saved him. So she has contributed to humanity in a way that the Brainiac did not. Okay, fair enough. I guess my point is, I didn't understand why you were supposed to be so concerned that like 300 years from now somebody was going to kill your. Well, yeah, that your, is kind your, of a your great, 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 great grandson or whatever. And also, the fact that they have one kid. Aren't they Catholic? Shouldn't they have like fifty thousand? <laughs> yeah, there should be. Yeah, by by that many generations, there should be like eighteen thousand. <laughs> uh, there's the end of the movie has this wonderful sequence where, for no reason whatsoever, uh, these two kind of comic relief cops that have been uh, doing nothing during the entire movie uh, walk into Brainiac's castle. With, with a giant flamethrower. Yes. Mexican cops have flamethrowers. I thought some machine guns were bad, but flamethrowers. I'd like to cow. point out they never try to shoot him. No, no. So they, they have no reason to believe guns wouldn't work on him. But flamethrowers for sure are going to do the thing. Even though he was burned to death earlier in the movie and came That's back. That's true. So I don't know why it's supposed to be effective this time. I guess there wasn't a meteor that he could go into. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, Brainiac is fantastic. Yeah. Like, it, it's much funnier than we're making it sound. Like, it, yeah. it is... It is, it it is, is hilarious. A, it is a joy. See it with the crowd and enjoy every second yeah. of it. It's available on DVD and on YouTube and everything. Yeah, it's, it's oh, wonderful. So, because that was an enjoyable bad movie, I'm going to make you explain about a movie that you love that I am bemused by. <laughs> okay. Which is It's Alive. Yeah, and we're talking the uh, Larry Buchanan. It's I'm not alive. talking about the, 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 the uh, Cohen one about right. the killer baby. This is literally, this is a dinosaur movie, apparently. It's, it's hard to tell. Sort of, kind of. Um, Larry Buchanan is probably best known for making Zontar thing from Venus. And he's from Texas. Yes. All his films were made in Texas. Uh, Zontar used to be a bigger thing because people used to watch TV more when they were kids. I don't think kids like just watch TV all day like we used to. 
Um, well, they, they, they may watch video the, games. They may watch it too, but they, they aren't watch, watching TV right, they shows. Watch right? YouTube. They, yeah, they, they don't, don't just watch old. Yeah, they have Netflix. Um, mm. It's Alive is a horrendously cheap uh, movie where a mad. What is that guy even? A farmer, or he? He's opening like caves as a tourist attraction, but he he also found. Well, it's supposed to be a dinosaur, but it's a guy in a wetsuit with. It's pink really hard eyes. to tell it's a dinosaur. It yeah. is the. It is literally the worst dinosaur. Yes. It is such a bad dinosaur that Ken had to repeatedly tell me it was a dinosaur to believe it. And the only reason I knew it was big is because he told a story of his friend who didn't know it was big. Yes, I had a friend, Andrew Machoni. We used to. This was like the second bad movie that I ever really came across. This is when I was really like young and super passionate because I was in the the blush of my youth with bad movies. And the first one was Curse of Bigfoot, and then the second one was It's Alive. And we were so hypnotized by it, we would just watch it like over and over and over. We must have watched it like 30 times. I'm not exaggerating. We no, I was going to say here, just so you know, that the way they have the monster seem big is ineffective because they do it by having the monster's head be close to the camera. Yes. And the humans being far away from the camera. Yes. And it's really, really obvious that's what they're doing. There's no doubt in your yeah. mind. The monster's close. They're far away. There's not a question. Yeah. It's, it, he, it doesn't work as well as like... Peter Jackson used the same technique to make the hobbits look small. Yeah, but he was somewhat more technically proficient. Yes. So he pulled it off a little better. Uh, the effect in this movie is so poor that I was amazed one time. So we're watching, I'm watching the movie with my friend Andrew, like probably for literally the 20th something time. And I mentioned like, finally I said like, this has got to be the worst attempt to make a monster look like a giant monster. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, he's, he, it's, that's a giant monster. He's like, no, it's not. And I'm like, and again, he's seen this movie like 20 20 times. times. And I'm like, well, it's a dinosaur. And he's like, but it's a man-sized dinosaur. And I'm like, well, why do you think like the the head is so big? And he's like, it's closer to the camera. And I'm like, yes, it's closer to the camera because they're trying to make it look like a giant. And he refused to believe me. And then immediately after it attacks a guy who has a pistol and the guy- The guy's shooting up. Yeah, the guy's like, ah, and he's shooting up like this. And I'm like, why is that guy shooting up towards the ceiling if the monster isn't? And he, he's dead and he's looked at the movie and he's like, oh, I guess it's a giant. <laughs> and he watched it 20 times and didn't know it was giant. And I knew it was giant because Ken told me, because yes, if he, I had not heard that story, I would not know it was a giant monster. Yeah, it, it's the effect is not brought off all that well. 